He's a rational investor. Dividend digester. Saves some numbers paycheck just like all his ancestors. ancestors. Him looking for high yields? That's never the case. He's seeking 6% return. Slow and steady wins the race. We pay our debts in our currency. That might be unfurled if it's no longer the reserve currency of the world. Confidence in the dollar is permanent. Just ask any scholar. People are exchanging their dollars for dog money. Dog money? Dog money. Dog money. We trading it in for dog money. Dog money. Dog money. Dog money. Dog money. I'm putting it all in dog money. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome to Satoshi's Bitcoin Chart Show. <clears throat> this is the Bitcoin forecast, the strength of the system, the health of the network, where we find out what's up with what is going down. So I'm going to try and get this. I'm going to try and get these shows as short as possible. Recently, they've been coming in around 37 minutes. Uh, ideally, it's 10 minutes because uh, YouTube statistics say that the majority of people only watch it for 10 minutes. So I am going to try and just constantly cut it down as as much as I can. So uh, let's do it. Rock and roll. Here we go. So uh, let's start off with the charts here. So we're just going to start off with a few short video clips here. So uh, BTC Core Coin, Samsung Mao. What can you tell us about uh, about Core Coin? Here we go. Let's have a listen. Yeah, yeah stream controls it. That's right. They do. Uh, what have you got to say about that, uh, Max Kaiser? All right. <laughs> And uh, B Crash, why do we call it B Crash? Well, it's because Roger Ver calls it B Crash himself. Have a listen. And we're going to really spread Bitcoin Crash across the entire country here in Antigua. Yeah, good luck with that, Roger, you buffoon. And uh, and look at Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin here. So uh, let's just have a listen to uh, CSW explaining why he is spending all this money in Bitcoin. I want Bitcoin not to go up to 10,000 or 100,000. I want it to be worth millions per Bitcoin. That's it. And that's what we spend money for. Very simple. There we go. That's what they spend money for. Very simple. So let's have a look at this. So we've got hash rate 0.6%, network nodes 1.7%, transactions 50% of the transactions on the network belong to Bitcoin. Absolutely beautiful. Block size 60.8% percent absolutely fantastic love it right so uh now we're just gonna have a quick look at our block sizes and stuff so uh roger what do you say to all those people like particularly particularly uh global trade and international commerce who say they need a, a regulatory compliant monetary system in order to uh, conduct business the ones that say that the blockchains all need to be legally compliant about everything all the time uh just go use your visa card fine i will because i don't want to use an unregulatory compliant piece of dog shit <laughs> uh, right and now we are just going to have a, uh, a quick lizard. where's my where's my favorite one here we go michael sailor welcome to the show um so i know that you've read the white paper and uh, you seem quite happy about it but you know well uh, what would you say if i was thinking about like effing it up and like changing it and implementing a uh, segwit which would be effectively bling a uh, bring a uh, Bitcoin under the control of a centralized authority known as Blockstream. You know, a uh, child pays for parent, replaced by fee and lightning network that would starve the miners. What's your uh, what's your opinion on uh, on changing Bitcoin? I like Bitcoin the way it is. Oh, uh, well, you know, so do we, Michael. How do you compete with that? In fact, in fact, I love Bitcoin the way it is. All right, mate. All right. Calm down. Well, uh, you can't just leave it there. You're going to have to tell us why. The way it's currently constructed... It is possible to put all $250 trillion of monetary energy. Whoa, $250 trillion of monetary energy. Like, how's that going to fit? Where's it going to go? In big blocks of encrypted energy on the blockchain. Whoa, that sounds pretty great. What kind of numbers are we talking about? Maybe the Bitcoin will be a million. You can probably calculate $10 million of Bitcoin or something. Whoa, $10 million per Bitcoin or something. I mean, where's it going to fit and where's it going to go? Big blocks, $100 million chunks on the blockchain. <laughs> All right. Well, let's have a look for these blocks then. So we've got Hathor. Look at that. So again, you know, we're competing for small and large blocks because we're trying to... Uh, um, kick the shitcoin enterprises off the chain. So look, we've got Taos, we've got 4, 1, 1, 10, 7, 
five, one, one, eleven, fourteen. Oh, relatively small blocks in comparison to what we're normally looking at. Twenty-two, three, one, two, five. Oh, yeah, that's all right. But I mean, look at B crash. Look, the skinny blocks are there. They're, they're having trouble even getting a megabyte of data on there. And then uh, Core Coin again, just with a uh, one megabyte of restricted block size. Look at that. Absolutely pathetic. Hilarious. Uh, hash rate, so hash rate follows price, follows value, follows utility, follows creativity, initiative, and intelligence. If you are intelligent and you apply creativity and initiative, you can make something useful. When something is useful, it can then create value. When it creates value, it can then develop a price. When it develops a price, it can then be measured against the cost of other goods and services and used as a medium of exchange. That's the whole idea. Uh, proof of work by network again. Cool coin B crash will fall into their own footprint one day. B crash Bitcoin uh, hash rate. Who cares? B crash Bitcoin proof of work. Who cares? It is fifteen thousand times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than Cool coin, which looks like it's ten times cheaper than B crash as well. Oh dear, oh dear, ten times. That's like that's a thousand percent. A thousand percent. It is currently twelve point one percent more profitable to mine on Cool coin. Then it is uh, Bitcoin, so that's com competition for the system. And it's only 1.9% more profitable to mine on uh, Bcrash. And that's uh, and Hathor isn't even on there now. So literally, they're, they're stuck mining a useless chain and it's not even all that profitable for them. It's hilarious. Uh, daily average Bitcoin block size by network. Oh, uh, still Bitcoin smashing it. But, you know, after a, a substantial rise, we've got a little bit of a fall there. Never mind. Uh, transactions by network get yeah, Bitcoin winning. Transactions per block by network, Bitcoin winning. Uh, fees, this is fees uh, in the block, which is due with transaction volume. That's USD. Same thing, Satoshi's. Uh, block reward ratio and the fee. So again, it's percentages here. So we're expecting huge increases in price and, uh, and transaction volume. So we'll keep an eye on that. Look at this daily accumulated Bitcoin blockchain growth by network. Have some of that. Let's have a quick look at this. Here we go. Mind the gap, as they say. Let's have a come on, come on. Should have had this page loaded already. Precious seconds being wasted on today's show. Come on, come on. I'm looking at the 7 minutes 30 already. Come on. Come on, coin dance. I'm on the clock here. What are you waiting for? Oh, here we go. All right. So look at this beautiful uh, 374 gigabytes of data. And remember, they've tested 380 gigabyte blocks on the, on the genuine Bitcoin. So imagine one block with all that data in it. Absolutely sensational. That is what that is what Bitcoin is capable of. And uh, so we'll just. I wonder if the chain. Oh, I shouldn't. Have, I should have done my maths then. Uh, what are we now? Are we now are we 20 gigabytes in front? Let's have a let's have a little look. 20.14 gigabytes. Loving that. Loving that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, indeed. All right, let's carry on. Let's get through this. Uh, there we go. So global hash rate, seven days. Yeah, global hash rate, 24 hours. Probably the same as Core. Oh, no, Core coin looks like Binance and BTC.com trading places. Um, everything else looks pretty similar, though, really, yeah. Uh, B crash. Look at this. So, th um, Ant pool, which is bit main, 38.3% uh, of the hash rate. Uh, combine that with BTC.com because that's also bit main, which means crikey, they've got like almost oh, that's 60. So that's almost almost 70% of the hash rate on uh, by bit main on B crash. That's absolutely hilarious. And Hathor just with 2.7%, uh, just you know making that profitability equal the same as Corecoin. But there is there is no growth on the chain as we've just seen it it's a dead project literally a dead project but none of these none of these none of these people understand what bitcoin what bitcoin is they don't have a clue they're literally just mining it in with blind faith you know that's it a ridiculous ideology there is no fundamental value in this chain as we've seen already it's literally dead this is complete this is a complete waste of energy it will go to zero um there's no point in mining it at all it's hilarious no utility in it. And this is Bitcoin. So it's 12% more profitable to mine on CoreCoin than it is uh, Bitcoin, which is what we're looking at here. And that's because we're squeezing the shitcoin enterprises off the chain. Good to see Mempool, Norpool still on there. Uh, via BTC uh, still being squeezed. Um, F2 pool being squeezed, but they're still wanting some. 
uh, gesturing, you know, but again, uh, the only thing that these people know is price because they don't understand what Bitcoin is. They have no fundamental understanding. And uh, the reason we're squeezing them off the chain is because when the demand for Bitcoin kicks in, they're not holding any, they can't mine any because they don't have the algorithm to be able to do it. They're going to have to dump their shitcoin. It's going to be immense when it happens. They will be dumping their shitcoin to buy the genuine Bitcoin. That's what they, that's the only that's the only way they'll get it. Literally, it is just going to be unbelievable. Um, you know what's going to it's just going to go mental. Absolutely insane. But until then, let's just have a look at the short positions. Have a jolly good laugh at this. All these shit coiners not having a clue what they're doing. Short positions were started off there by 91. And they are now currently 90. What a joke. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin blockchain working live in front of our very eyes. So oh, I'm in 10 minutes already. Uh, so this is this is the blockchain. For anybody who doesn't know what's behind this, this is amazing. This is the process that transactions go through to get onto the blockchain. And this is what's behind all of this that we're looking at. Look at the size of these mining farms. Absolutely sensational. So first of all, the transactions are recognized by the network nodes, uh, by the mining nodes on the network, which are the uh, vertical rectangular blocks moving across the top of the screen. They're then thrown into the memory pool, which is where they're competed for by the miners and payment processors in order to create a block, put the transaction within a block, and then place the block on the blockchain down here, which is when they're rewarded with the Coinbase data, otherwise known as the block reward, otherwise known as freshly minted Bitcoin. And as you can see, this block here, 22 megabyte block in the highlighted rectangular blocks below that. We've got the hash of the block, the block height, who it was mined by, size, time, date, town, um, time and date, transaction count, and total fees of like just $21. So I'll we'll, uh, just let Laura Shin explain the significance of uh, transaction fees right now. Take the floor, shit, go on, shit, here we go. So, you know, as you mentioned, at a certain point when the block reward stops, there will be a transition where miners will be compensated in transaction fees, not in the block reward. And the current um, amount that they earn is uh, from fees is about 9% of the block reward. And so we'd have to see transaction fees 11x by roughly 2140, which is when the uh, new Bitcoins will stop being minted. But I just wondered, you know, if we don't see um, like uh, an increase in the amount of transactions that can happen at layer one, because the number of layer one tran transactions is limited. Um, and right now I feel like a lot of the scaling is focusing on layer two. Can transaction fees 11x in that time or or will that require people to pay a lot more per transaction over the next couple halving cycles we should see it start to predominantly be the value that is compensated to the miners in the block reward if bitcoin is the world reserve currency that doesn't have a strong security model like there's not a lot of monetary compensation in the block reward due to transaction fees well then it's long-term security will be weak if it is the world reserve currency there'll be very very many layer one transaction fees Okay, yeah, so it sounds like you think it is possible that the um, the amount in transaction fees um, will maybe not be enough on layer one to replace the block reward when the time comes. Absolutely, it won't be enough. How can seven transactions a second service all of this lot? Honestly, honestly, the block size has been purposely restricted to starve the miners so that they won't be able to economically sustain themselves and the network will collapse. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh dear, oh dear. So anyway, let's have a look at uh, BitInfo charts. Look at this. Bitcoin now is still with 13% of the overall transactions. Look at this. The only coins worth looking at are these three. They are the biggest uh, transaction generators on the entire shit show here. And uh, we've got XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, a cool coin, one that's been restricted, people trying to use it. But we're just going to have a quick listen to uh, the chief technical officer of uh, Ripple explaining how shit XRP is. Here we go. Uh, the XRP, XRP is a digital asset. It's censorship resistant. It's publicly traded. It trades on the XRP ledger. Ripple does not own or control the XRP ledger in any way. So how did Ripple then get all the XRP that it has? It has about half the supply. So uh, just how, how, did, how did that particular uh, transaction happen? 
So the way its design works is when the ledger first began operation, the 100 billion XRP, all that will ever exist, were sort of up for grabs. And lots of people grabbed XRP out of that system. But it just so happens that obviously, just like early miners mined you know, huge amounts of Bitcoin before the public knew about it or was using it, uh, early XRP users grabbed large amounts of that pool of XRP. And so uh, the people who developed the ledger wound up with a, 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 you know, a, um, the vast majority of it. Yeah, because they just grabbed it. What a joke. It's a completely centralized project. It's absolutely an illegal security offering. It has no value as money whatsoever. It's absolutely ridiculous. And now let's have to these uh, douchebags on Ethereum telling us that Ethereum cannot scale. Here we go. Build on top of that. Turns out we can build a financial you're, you're plumbing layer. The concept of launching something that doesn't scale and then rebuilding sure. it as it something scales, scalable it was scales the somewhat. initial plans or uh, initial yeah we, we knew it wasn't going to be scalable for sure um <laughs> yeah we knew it wasn't going to be scalable for sure um yeah you can say that again <laughs> and let's just have a look at bitcoin transactions for any newbies just because i love this chart so much log here we go that is bitcoin oh yes indeed beautiful let's move on scaling test network yeah just looking at the figures here still the same um oh, da, da, missed a bit uh come on let, right let's go to twitter next uh just have this uh, lovely picture of shadows we're gonna listen to him talking about the scaling test network here come on let's have it let's have it come on come on on the clock here come on come on come on here we go come on let's have it let's have it rock and roll come on we, we might we might still do this in good time come on here we go, just bring this picture up of Shadows. Here we go, take the floor Shadows, tell us what's going on. We have run this in a, in a, uh, across all 10 nodes and I have actually seen uh, volumes in excess of 100,000 per second. I wasn't quite brave enough to try that one today, uh, live on stage. But um, there we have a, a real life example of a Terra nodes uh, that, that is able to scale. If I had more time, I would show you one that's actually running at a uh, steady state capacity and show that it actually can continue for uh, a long period of time without, uh, without any problems. Love it, love it. Now listen to the disclaimer. Uh, for reference, we don't think that the Bitcoin SV software would be able to handle uh, a validation rate uh, like that at this point in time. Oh, now listen to the roadmap. By the end of this month, we're hoping to actually have uh, uh, alpha versions of Terranode listening on the mainnet. They won't be trying to produce blocks. They'll just be listening and processing peer-to-peer -peer messages. We'll also build, uh, we have built uh, scale test nets, global scale test nets uh, for the Terranode specifically. We can't do this on the scaling test net because we'll crush it. Oh, because they would crush the current scaling test network. How big is this thing going to be? It's going to be huge. Because we have proven that Terranode can scale, we've proven what Satoshi always said about Bitcoin. Bitcoin can and does scale. Thank you very much. Awesome, Steve. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Uh, Trends.cash, TDX, PAP, 74.3% of apps ranking by money spent. Uh, apps ranking by performed actions. Run protocol, crypto fights with 33. That is awesome. Looking good. TDX, PAP down in 10th in terms of apps ranking by performed actions. But, I mean, money spent. Degenerate gamblers, people loving it. Uh, crypto Quant, so again, for any newbies, the uh, the exchanges, this is BTC All Exchange Reserve, they've been selling out because it's fundamentally worthless. Because they've been selling out, it's caused a liquidity squeeze and a spike in the price, but it's a spike in the price. What is their dumping and it's the tether printing that has been trying to counteract that. That's why they've been printing so much because they knew the exchanges have been dumping it, but they can't just print all that money anymore. You know, it's a massive bubble. It will pop. It's really quite scary. Uh, Joho's main pool. So this is what a memory pool is meant to look like. Data comes in, then it gets cleared. Data comes in, then it gets cleared. Uh, let's have a look at BTC, Core Coin. Now this is what a memory pool is not meant to look like. An actual swimming pool with algae on it because it cannot clear any of the transactions. Absolute joke. And then we can see uh, the actual shit show being played out here in front of our very eyes. So uh, now we're just going to have a listen to uh, Adam back and uh, his thoughts on uh, on a payment network. So, you know, fee estimation in some cases is quite bad. You know, if you're paying a friend, you can probably afford to wait four hours and not pay a priority fee. Yeah, right. You absolute moron. And uh, let's have a listen to uh, Vitalik negging on BTC, taking the mickey out of the fact that they've currently now got a median transaction fee of $2.53. 
the internet of money should not cost five cents a transaction. It's it's kind of absurd. It's kind of absurd. So uh, why does the uh, median ETH transfer fee have a uh, fee of four dollars and fourteen cents, Vitalik? Do you want to explain yourself, or do you just want to admit that Ethereum is a total shit show? <laughs> And uh, this is our own shit show. So what do we know about all this money printing? Where does it lead? Statistical analysis has found that every time an empire begins to near its own demise, you'll find that its currency will be debased. And that is exactly what we're looking at there. And the reason they don't want to uh, see any more of these figures is because, look, it's dropped off the end of a cliff. So uh, where might that money be going? Well, let's have a little chat with Donald Rumsfeld. How can we seriously consider a $50 billion increase in the defensive budget when DOD's own auditors say the department cannot account for $2.3 trillion in transactions in one year alone? Now, my question to you is, Mr. Secretary, what do you plan to do about this? Decline the nomination. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I just can't account for six billion dollars a day. How incompetent have you got to be? Or maybe it's fraud, more likely. He knows exactly where it's going in his pocket. Uh, the morning run, so we've got the volume on here. F just over four thousand dollars. Stay away from this, people. It's an absolute shit show. Move fast and break stuff does not mean breaking the law, which is what all this shit is. Um, Let's have a look at the depth charts. We got uh, 6.8 million bids versus 5.8 million asks. Currently more buyers and sellers at the moment, but we're expecting a huge increase in these figures as uh, the surge comes in later on. Let's have a look at uh, Bitfinex. Ah, oh, thank you, Bitfinex. Ah, oh, so this is the um, Bitcoin USD price. Oh, just going down a little bit there. $162. Imagine picking up Bitcoin for $162. Crazy. Let's take a BTC shitcoin. Yeah, it's kind of like following, uh, going trending downwards a little bit. And let's have a look at Bitcoin versus shitcoin. Oh, holding its own, holding its own. Good, good, good. Let's have a look at the uh, the coin crap market. Ooh, a cool coin down to 35. So that's down 3.6%. Where's Bitcoin? Because that's the only one we're really interested in. Oh, down 35 as well. Oh yeah, just not as bad as CoreCoin. We'll take that. <laughs> uh, my uh, 82 new subscribers in the last 28 days, uh, up to um, 564. Lucky, lucky. Uh, we're 22 minutes already. Can't look at douchebags of Bitcoin. Uh, Stream Manatee quickly. Oh look at that. Eight paid made one dollar sixty on that last one. More than you'll ever make on YouTube. Uh, let's have a look at Twitch statistics just quickly. How many more users do we have over the last 24 hours? Come on, come on. Let's have a little acorn stack. Bring it on. Bring it on. Uh, my followers, 417. Uh, 60 new users. That's all right. Better than nothing. And Twitch, uh, Twitchy, uh, Twitch, Twitch, Twitter. Uh, Ruthie's tweet, 965. Loving that. And Zatoshi, just quickly. Where is he? Is it? Oh, 78,500. That's gone down. Twitter taking his followers away. And let's have a quick look at stablecoin printer. Has USD been up to no good? Oh, yeah, no, that's all right. And we're there, people. Right, shout out to people in the chat box. Z Australia, Keith Fellows, SK30AM. Great stuff. Uh, why would any miner accept a zero sat transaction? Uh, well, it's actually, it's just, it's it's like a, uh, a transaction that is less than a, less than a Satoshi. Uh, so remember, a Bitcoin can be divided by, well, it can be, the decimal places of Bitcoin can be increased to 16 or more decimal places. So it doesn't mean it's like a, a, a zero sat it just means that it's it's cheaper than a uh, satoshi and there's no name for it just yet um that's all it is so it's just uh, it's just efficiency economies of scale so uh 23 minutes oh that's not too bad still trying to uh, cut the show down a little bit more so we'll leave you there hope you enjoyed the show we are now up to date with the figures catch you guys later get paid for posting your pics on relica download the app now at www getrelica.com get your tweet etched on twitch forever on the bitcoin blockchain do it today at www.jointwitch.com buy bsv.live the best place to buy bitcoin sv online
Support independent content creators on micropayment platforms such as Streamanity, Twitch and Relica. We should profit from our data, not the large corporations who track, monitor and sell it. If you enjoy the Bitcoin content that I produce, please support me by heading over to www.satoshi.tv where you can keep up to date with all the latest news, gossip and content as it's created. Thanks very much. To get started in Bitcoin, go to freebsv.com where you can claim your free Bitcoin. Then head over to Twitter and follow at IamZatoshi where you can take part in his very generous and world famous free giveaways. The future of advertising meets the power of Bitcoin at Tonic Pow. Get paid for posting advertising campaigns to your social media profiles. Go to www.tonicpowads.com.